So in today's session, we're gonna talk more about what creatine does, especially within the muscle cell, the heart cell, and the glial cells within the brain, and help debunk some common creatine myths. You wouldn't believe it how many egregious comments I've read over the past several years about how people accuse creatine of causing hair loss. Oh, I've taken creatine, my nails fell out. Oh my gosh, I took creatine, I got hemorrhoids. Okay, look my friends, what creatine does is it helps with cellular energy production in your muscle, your heart, and also your brain, but other cells as well, especially under conditions that are of intense, like intense exercise, or there's ischemia or hypoxia. For example, you're doing interval training at altitude, creatine is going to help create cellular energy. Although creatine has been shown to improve athletic performance, help people retain a little bit more water and increase strength and uh, size and so forth, it doesn't increase anabolic hormones. When people say, I took this and it caused hair loss, you would assume that it would impact dihydrotestosterone or their other anabolic hormones. What creatine does is, is it helps with cellular energy production. So that's what we're gonna talk about. It is essentially a phosphate source when your muscles are being stressed in the context of exercise. Now, we could go into the glial cells in the brain on another video. There's a lot of research to show that the glue or the glial cells in the brain leverage creatine, especially because they're high energy cells, for example, during growth and development. Even in the placenta, a lot of energy is needed to make a new baby. Creatine is involved at the level of cellular energy production in the heart, the exercised heart, but also the diseased heart, it does leverage creatine and there's creatine uh, dysfunction uh, within the heart. But today we're gonna focus more on muscle and exercising muscle, because I know a lot of you, it's January, you wanna focus on burning fat, building muscle and looking better. So here's how creatine can help. So if we look here, you have your liver, you have your gut, we'll just put gut here, okay? So you have two form, two ways that you get creatine in your body. Uh, your liver is going to make it through a complex uh, mechanism that's beyond the scope of this conversation from the, the amino acids in your diet and so forth. Um, and also you're going to ingest creatine in animal products that you eat. So what happens is there's this uh, CRT, the, the creatine transporter here. This is just a very simplified version of a muscle cell or a heart cell, cardiomyocyte or a glial cell. So within, once creatine gets into the cell, it actually gets phosphorylated to phosphocreatine. Again, we're not changing anabolic hormones. It's not going to the hair follicle and zapping it. It's only increasing levels of phosphocreatine so that when your muscles are under load, especially if you're doing supersets or intervals or very intense weightlifting that is anaerobic, right? If you're just walking normal, phosphocreatine and the creatine system is not really going to help fuel those muscular activities. It's high intensity, short duration, weightlifting, sprinting, CrossFit, that's where creatine helps. It's essentially a source of phosphate when ATP is in short supply, okay? It's a source of phosphate because what happens here is ADP, when you're moving your muscles, when I'm doing this right now, what is catalyzing that myocyte to move? Well, it's the, the, phos the release of phosphate that helps that, the energy carried within adenosine triphosphate and the release when that phosphate molecule comes off, that finances or catalyzes and makes the muscular contractions happen. Well, when ATP is in short supply because you're doing interval training, because you, you're supersetting, because you're lifting heavier weights, you're getting progressive overload and implementing progressive overload principles, this is where this phosphate source from phosphocreatine helps. It's just like a piggyback. It's like, hey, look, ATP, I know you're in short supply, we gotcha. It's like, you know, it's, it's a way to uh, sort of time release, if you will. I'm sort of just making it easy to understand. Phosphocreatine is helping to give you some of that uh, phosphorus that can be used to make ATP under anaerobic conditions. Remember, it's not causing hair loss. It's not going to the hair follicle. It's literally helping with cellular energetics. It's not going to damage the kidneys. It's not doing all these things that many people have talked about. And I think it's important to recognize that some people see comments on the internet about all sorts of things and they start to believe it and think, oh my gosh, this is true. This is what this substance does where that the mind is so powerful. There were studies back in World War I and World War II when they ran out of morphine in combat and surgeons would just inject saline into people's arms but tell them, here's the morphine. And guess what? The people that had unfortunate uh, catastrophic events to their body, losing limbs and shrapnel and things like that, they actually felt a numbing effect from saline. The mind is powerful. So if you start to believe all of the things that people say on the internet about this thing or that thing, then you can literally drive yourself nuts. And it's important just to remember, practically speaking, how could increasing anaerobic cellular energy production 
cause hair loss? How could it cause all of these things? What you're doing is you're helping at the cellular level, you know, energy demanding cells work better. That's essentially what creatine is doing. So if you want to improve your exercise performance, if you want to get a little bit more umph from your workouts, potentially improve a little water retention because creatine is involved with hydration. And it's worth noting here, this receptor here called the tr creatine transporter, it does rely upon cals or potassium, magnesium, and I believe chloride, and I'm not sure about sodium, but I believe sodium is involved in facilitating the intracellular uptake of creatine. So that's why at Myosense we formulated the creatine electrolyte sticks that feature both creatine and electrolytes to help you get a little bit more mileage without overdoing the creatine. We found that people that take five grams of creatine, sometimes they get GI side effects, they're in the bathroom, uh, have watery stools and things like that. You can actually get a lot of mileage out of just taking one gram of creatine with electrolytes because it helps with the absorption of the creatine and utilization within the cell. So I'll just put links below to the creatine containing electrolyte sticks by Myoscience, very unique, you can travel with it, it's featuring real salt, real magnesium, it's a really great product. But again, just to remember friends, you know, imagine someone saying creatine causes hair loss, but then they go eat a steak. You know how much creatine you're getting in a steak? It's about five to seven grams, depending upon the size of the, uh, size of the steak. Have you ever heard of anyone losing their hair because they eat a steak? I, I, I haven't, my friends. So if you're taking supplemental one or two grams of creatine, it has way less creatine than is in a steak. And so how is that going to cause hair loss? I just, look, I, I want to acknowledge people's concerns, but again, we can be influenced, our mind can be influenced by the things that we read on the internet. The placebo effect is really strong. And we know that this is one of the most studied ergogenic aids that's been shown to improve athletic performance, strength, um, muscular endurance, a, a lot of different things. It's been widely recognized and it, it's not going to you know, change testosterone levels in a negative way. So I just wanted you to kind of understand this. We have a lot more videos about creatine because new research again is showing in the brain, the glue of the brain, the, the glial cells really help with neurotransmitter uh, resynthesis and clearing of debris and so forth that is created as a result of living and thinking throughout the day. Glial cells are these supportive cells and uh, research has actually shown that, that creatine really supports these energy demanding cells. And creatine has been shown to improve mitochondrial function within these cells as well. And that's why research has actually shown that you know, some people that are on vegan or vegetarian diets are more susceptible to anxiety and mental distress and so forth. And part of that could be the, the dearth or lack of carnonutrients like creatine, carnitine, taurine, folate, B12. Um, from those diets. So, you know, in closing, who really is creatine for? Well, people that are athletic, young athletes, athletes of all ages can benefit from this, especially if they're participating in sports that, re that depend upon anaerobic activities, CrossFit, weightlifting, Olympic lifting, powerlifting, even some yoga sessions, right, where you're going through the motions quickly and you feel that lactate buildup in the muscle, that can be characterized as an anaerobic exercise uh, session. Well, this is where that phosphocreatine can come, come in to help the working muscles. People who are wanting to improve their heart health. I wanna be careful and let you all know we can't talk about diagnosing, treating, curing, or preventing disease here, optimizing health. There's research showing in the failing heart that there is a, a dearth or lack of creatine and dysfunction in the signaling. So because the heart is a muscle, it does make sense to support the, the health of that muscle. People who have been on or are on a vegan or vegetarian diet, remember, uh, as great as you know, uh, kale is, it doesn't have creatine. You know? So you just need to remember that if you're on a vegan or vegetarian diet, you could benefit from, from creatine as well. And for people who are trying to optimize uh, brain health, again, we know, these, these, the glue of our central nervous system is these microglia cells, and they depend upon creatine and phosphocreatine to deliver cellular energy to help with neurotransmitter synthesis and clearance of debris and preventing neuroinflammatory uh, uh, physiologic states. So, tons of research on this, my friends, but I think people think creatine is somehow anabolic. It's not. It's supporting cellular energy production at the muscle and heart and uh, glial cell level. So, if you found this video, I'd be so honored if you could hit that like button, leave a comment below, and let me know what you thought about this, and I'll put some articles if you wanna dive further into this so you can read more about. So we'll catch you in a future video.